Renal infarction is a condition where the kidneys do not receive enough blood, causing tissue damage. It can be due to various causes such as blood clots, inflammation, or pregnancy. This video will cover the diagnosis, treatment, and long-term outcomes associated with renal infarction. Renal infarction occurs when emboli block the renal arteries, often originating from cardiac thrombi. Other sources include peripheral artery embolization. Identifying the embolic source is integral to management, which may involve anticoagulation, surgery, or endovascular procedures. Underlying causes should be addressed to prevent recurrence. Renal artery thrombosis causes renal infarction by blocking blood flow to the kidneys. It can be caused by various conditions. Diagnosis involves clinical suspicion, imaging, and lab tests. Treatment depends on severity, ranging from medication to surgery. Prompt intervention is important for preserving kidney function. Vasculitis, an inflammation of blood vessels, can affect the kidneys and cause renal infarction. Types like granulomatosis with polyangiitis, microscopic polyangiitis, polyarteritis nodosa, and Takayasu arteritis can lead to renal involvement. Immune-mediated vascular injury causes vessel wall inflammation and obstruction. Diagnosis is based on clinical features, lab findings, and possible biopsy. Treatment involves immune-suppressing medications and supportive measures to protect kidney function. Regular monitoring is important due to potential relapses and complications. Renal infarction and in renal transplant recipients is caused by vascular thrombosis in the allograft. Prompt diagnosis and management are crucial for preserving graft function. Diagnostic tools include ultrasound, Doppler imaging, and angiography. Treatment may involve anticoagulation and revascularization procedures, or, in severe cases, graft nephrectomy. Close monitoring of graft function and adherence to immunosuppressive therapies are key for successful outcomes. Renal infarction in the presence of atherosclerosis occurs when plaques accumulate in the renal arteries, causing blockages. Endothelial dysfunction, lipid deposition, inflammation, and thrombus formation contribute to the condition. Hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and smoking increase the risk. Managing these risk factors, including blood pressure control, glycemic control, lipid-lowering therapy, smoking cessation, and lifestyle modifications, can help prevent renal infarction. Renal infarction can lead to acute kidney injury, AKI, a sudden decline in renal function. Aki can occur due to various mechanisms, including renal ischemia, inflammation, and release of pro-inflammatory mediators. Prompt diagnosis and initiation of management strategies are crucial to limit the extent of renal injury and promote recovery. Treatment options for Aki secondary to renal infarction include supportive measures such as hydration and correction of electrolyte abnormalities. In severe cases, renal replacement therapy, such as hemodialysis or continuous renal replacement therapy, may be necessary. Understanding the underlying mechanisms of Aki and renal infarction is essential in tailoring management strategies to each individual patient. While renal infarction typically presents with acute onset of flank pain, hematuria, and sometimes fever, atypical presentations can pose diagnostic challenges. Atypical manifestations may include nonspecific abdominal pain, lower urinary tract symptoms, or even mimicking other conditions such as pyelonephritis or urolithiasis. The key to diagnosing atypical presentations lies in maintaining a high index of suspicion, especially in patients with risk factors such as vasculitis, thrombophilia, or recent surgery. Imaging modalities, including computed tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, or angiography, may be necessary to establish the diagnosis. Timely recognition of atypical presentations is crucial to prevent delays in treatment and potential complications. Flank pain is a common presenting symptom in various renal and non-renal conditions, making the differential diagnosis challenging. It is essential to consider key features when differentiating renal infarction from other causes of flank pain. While renal colic due to urolithiasis typically presents with severe colicky pain radiating to the groin, renal infarction often presents with a constant, dull flank pain that may be accompanied by hematuria and constitutional symptoms. Other conditions to consider in the differential diagnosis include pyelonephritis, renal tumor, and musculoskeletal causes. Thorough history taking, physical examination, and the judicious use of imaging and laboratory tests can aid in reaching the correct diagnosis and guiding appropriate management. Imaging is crucial in diagnosing renal infarction. Non-invasive techniques like Doppler ultrasonography and computed tomography angiography provide detailed vascular information. Invasive modalities like renal angiography may be required for specific cases. Understanding the strengths and weaknesses of each modality is important for diagnosis and treatment planning. The prognosis of renal infarction depends on multiple factors, including the underlying cause, extent of infarction, and promptness of intervention. 
some patients recover completely, while others develop chronic kidney disease. Close monitoring and early intervention are important to optimize outcomes. 26 words, renal infarction during pregnancy presents challenges due to physiological changes. Prompt diagnosis is crucial. Non-invasive imaging is preferred. Management depends on severity of renal involvement and overall maternal fetal status. Multidisciplinary approach is key for optimal outcomes. In renal infarction, anticoagulation therapy can help prevent further clot formation, preserving kidney function. Guidelines exist for some scenarios, but there are controversies and individual factors to consider. Collaboration with specialists and careful decision-making are necessary. In conclusion, renal infarction requires a comprehensive approach to diagnosis and management. Understanding its various causes, diagnostic techniques, and treatment options is essential for providing optimal care. Ongoing research and multidisciplinary collaboration are key to improving patient outcomes.